had an old buddy come visit me yesterday, just dropped in on me, and I was telling folks in my uh, community there on Locals that uh, this is something that's very common in Appalachia, where I'm from and where I'm at currently, where the people you know just drop in on you, and <laughs> unannounced. And this was something that I did not experience in all my years in Philadelphia, uh, nor in the Boston area. In fact, out there, culturally, that's a big no-no. It's considered rude to do that, but uh, in Appalachia, it's not. And so I had this buddy drop by. His name's Rocky. And I was sharing some audio that I had recorded of just us sitting around and jawing and chewing the fat. But it reminded me of a story uh, involving poison ivy. I'm immune to poison ivy, and growing up, everybody I knew in my family was immune to poison ivy. My brother, my sister, my dad, uh, I don't know about my mom, but, uh, you know, we grew up way out in the woods, and poison ivy was everywhere, and and it was never a problem for us. We were totally immune to it. We could take it in our hands and everything, the the vines, the leaves themselves, wad those leaves up, crush them in our hands, nothing, nothing. So I grew up thinking, and I really believe this, believing that uh, being allergic to poison ivy was all in a person's head. I truly believe that, and I, I believed it up until just a few years ago. In fact, I have uh, kids from the city come to visit, and uh, we'd be out in the woods, they'd be saying, is that poison ivy, is that poison ivy? Because they're freaking out, worried about brushing up against some poison ivy. And even if they were brushing through poison ivy, we'd tell them, no, no, it's no poison ivy. Because I was just convinced that it's all in your brain, and I'm not going to entertain it. I'm not going to play into that. Well, when my daughter was, I think, three, I was renting this place that had, you know, every summer, poison ivy grew up along the side of this house. And... Uh, so one day I had her out there with me and I was tearing that poison ivy down with my bare hands te- tearing down all the vines and making a big pile of them she did not come into contact with any poison ivy or the vines or the leaves or nothing but just the dust coming off the, those vines so as I'm ripping them down the dust is, is in the air just the dust made her break out terribly with poison ivy and uh, that because she was only three I knew that she had not had time to become indoctrinated into believing, to even knowing what poison ivy is, let alone believing that it can affect you that way. So that was my first real-life proof that people having reactions to poison ivy is a real, is an honest-to-God real thing. Before that, I, I did not believe it. I did not believe it because, like I say, I had never seen anybody break out from it, and everybody in my family could handle the stuff no problem. But that was proof positive for me. Anyway, the story don't end there. One night Rocky says, hey, uh, how about if I bring over some hot dogs and we have a fire tonight? And uh, Rocky, I'll tell you who he looks like. He looks like Popcorn Sutton, a famous moonshiner. Looks exactly like him. Looks like him, talks like him, dresses like him. Big old long gray beard, older feller. I said, yeah, sounds like a good idea so it got dark he come over with the hot dogs I had a fire going there we started cooking the, the hot dogs over the fire yes put putting the hot dog on a stick and cooking it over the open fire and then uh, Rocky had a hot dog and then uh, a little bit of time passed he stuck another hot dog on a stick cooked that over the fire started eating that and then he started coughing <coughs> he says what do you got on that fire I said why he says <coughs> whatever you got in that fire it's, it's choking me up And it turned out that it was those uh, poison ivy vines. I had thrown a bunch of those vines into the fire. And here Rocky had cooked his wiener hot dog over top the the campfire. And the poison ivy was uh, affecting him. Oh, man, I laughed so hard about that. Literally, only like the day before had I had seen for the very first time poison ivy affect somebody. And here (laughs) he was cooking his his wieners over the, the poison ivy. And it was affecting him. I felt so bad. I'm telling you, that's just how much out of my mind it was that 
that that was a real thing. Even after I saw it affect my daughter, I went right back to thinking of it as nothing that will affect anybody because it doesn't affect me. And you know, there's so many lessons from that. I've told you, I think, that back you know, before my big major life crisis, I looked at psychology as just being quack stuff and just being total fiction. And there I was, living my whole life living with something that only psychology can explain and that only an interest uh, and a digging into psychology could fix. But as far as I was concerned, psychology was just a bunch of nothing. It was just a big fictional joke. So uh, two, two instances in my life where I learned a real important lesson about you can be so certain of a thing um, and be proved uh, completely ignorant in the very next instant, you know, and it makes you completely change uh, your thinking on that thing. Happened with psychology, happened with poison ivy.